Thank you, and thank you to the Somali Museum for having me here tonight and for this wonderful event. Uh, my name is Omar Fatah, and I'm here to speak to the audience, specifically the young men, about the importance of education, family, and preserving our culture. My father, Mahmoud Ahmed Fatah, was born in Somalia 75 years ago, in a time when our people had an abundance of wealth, but a shortage of birth certificates. His birthday has never been confirmed, and growing up he would be jokingly tell us that it was because he was born in a bush. So in 1963, he was offered the opportunity to take a test to attend the university in America on a full scholarship. Out of many applicants, he was one of just 10 selected, and he was placed at Montana State University to study civil engineering. So keep in mind, he was coming to America during the height of the civil rights movement, and he was the only black college student in his college until his senior year. Growing up, he shared countless stories with me and my siblings about the racism and prejudice that he endured, and how he chose to remain patient and complete his studies, rather than fighting back or quitting. There were several occasions in which he was met by hate, but he chose to remain kind to others and strong to his faith, even helping tutor the same ones that despised him. Many of the students that came to the university with a bias towards him ended up developing an admiration for him. And that's because of how he carried himself as a man, a Muslim man. So he'd always repeat these stories to us as kids and always made sure to let us know that he was well aware that even though he knew many of the students and professors wouldn't respect him as a black man. He'd make sure that they would not only respect him as a man of character, but as a student by maintaining high grades and graduating at the top of his class. So although I always remembered and carried these stories with me, I never fully respected or understood his trials until I was much older. Throughout middle and high school, I was never a serious student. Like many youth in the city, I also was a troubled child. I was constantly skipping classes, I never did my homework, and I barely graduated high school. So it was during that time that I really began to absorb everything that my family has been telling me growing up. As a 17-year-old boy, I realized I had a decision to make. I could fulfill my purpose in our new country, the reason why my parents came here in the first place, to get an education and later a career, or I can continue my reckless ways with bad company. So it was then that I decided to choose the first option and enroll the community college that fall. I went on to transfer to George Mason University to earn my bachelor's, and just last year, I earned my master's in public administration. So I say that to say this. It is well known that despite the men of our fathers and grandfathers' generations providing us with strong examples of mature and capable fathers and husbands, that that ethic has been weakened among our generation. It is partly because of the circumstances of a different environment with different challenges, but we must also recognize that the young women of this generation, despite facing the same challenges as their brothers, in addition to the pressures to take care of their homes and families, are still able to graduate and get jobs. They are the ones advancing themselves while many of the boys are falling behind. Our women need men to grow with. Our community has enough boys, we need more men. So to the young men in the audience tonight, work on yourselves first and build a future here. Whether it's earning a college degree or developing a skill, it is time for us men to step it up and do our part. Finally, I'd like to conclude by saying this. We are one of the, mo we are one of the more successful communities in the state, but we also face a lot of challenges. How the media portrays our people, about a handful of individuals, does not represent the thousands of hard-working indiv individuals in our state. We are entrepreneurs and we are politically engaged, but we need to have more positive visibility in the state. We need to stand out in a positive way, and it is up to us to change the narrative by showing the beauty of our culture and displaying our strengths. We Somalis have a saying, stand out or remain absent. Thank you.